He's back at Neo for the second time. Please welcome to the stage, Ross Simmons. Hieroglyphics, ancient texts, storybooks, coloring books, TV, radio, magazines, podcasts, and now AI. All of these forms of content and media have influenced us as people for a very, very long time. We've all been influenced by it. Every single day we wake up with biases, with perspectives, with opinions, with beliefs that, while we don't even realize it, have been shaped by the content that we've consumed, that our parents consumed and passed down to us, the generations before us consumed and passed down to us, and so on and so on and so on. We are going through one of the most fundamentally life-changing times in humanity. The rise of AI is having a massive impact on all of us. And today, we're going to be diving into how it's influencing the way donors think, the way that you should be thinking, the way that you create content, tell stories, try to communicate, to get gifts, all of these things. But before I dive into that, I need to share something with you all. I have to share with you a lie. A lie that we've all been told for so many years. A lie that hasn't really impacted me too negatively, but it has, has a, had a pretty, pretty significant impact on at least my childhood, which was the simple belief that if you swallow bubble gum, it would stick in your stomach for a long time. I thought this was a thing. Like, for a very long time, if gum ever got close to the back of my throat, I have like a panic attack. <laughs> Get out of here, like, not happening. I'm not going to ha let this happen. We have all been lied to. And it's, again, those stories, that content that can, we consume that gets us thinking this way. Another lie that I didn't realize until it was way t I was way too old was the fact that if you drive around with your dome light, you don't actually go to jail. My dad told me this so many times. If you have that dome line on, I'm going to go to jail. I was like, I don't want dad to go to jail, right? It's so bad. Like, this, let me show you how old I was when I realized this. So I'm literally driving in my minivan. I went from Mini Cooper to minivan with my three kids in the back, and my daughter has like some glow stick. She pops the light, and I'm like, Aaliyah, turn. That, what are you doing? Like, I'm going to get arrested. And then my wife's like, wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, okay, my bad. What are you talking about? Like, th this is fake. So I called my dad up. I ripped him out. And I, but anyways, long story short, y'all are probably wondering, what in the world does this have to do with AI and nonprofits and trying to get money, all these things? Well, here's another lie that we've been told. We've been told that AI content will never work. It's not human enough. It's not able to create valuable stories. You can't use AI to drive results. Nobody wants to hear from an AI. Nobody's going to listen to a video that's half AI. AI is not going to have a, a bad impact on us. I want to have a quick show of hands. How many of you believe that AI could do, hear me out, I'm not saying the whole job, elements of your job? Quick show of hands. My people, OK. You all aren't going to hate me too much. So for those of you who did not put your hands up, Challenge your beliefs and embrace experiments. That's the only thing that I want you to leave here thinking about. You need to challenge your beliefs and embrace experimentation because I believe truly that AI is going to have a massive impact on the way all of us work. And today, my hope is to share with you both the theories and strategies that can help you win, but also some tactical things that you can take back. Let me share with you an example of how AI content can drive ridiculous results. There's this website called CNET. CNET is essentially a publication that is constantly creating content around things related to finance. Now, in the finance world, it is very difficult to create content that shows up in Google because Google would consider that to be very highly sensitive information. If you're creating this type of content, it needs to be factual, it needs to be insightful, like you're talking about people's money, their livelihoods, this is important. They created hundreds of pieces of content using ChatGPT hundreds and hundreds of pieces of content, right? They essentially let their entire content team just be replaced by AI creating this content. And guess what? The AI made a whole bunch of errors. It was really, really bad. And the internet was clapping. Yay, you little AI, get out of here. Like, you're not able to take our jobs, writers forever. Go humans, all that stuff. And rumor had it on the street that CNET shut it all down, that they were like, Oh, we're so sorry, you know, when people apologize for things they're not actually sorry for, but they do it to save face. That's what they had to do, right? And then, guess what? I decided that I was going to become Sherlock Homeboy. That, this is like my counter person that I try to be. Sherlock Homeboy, let's figure this out. 
Y'all are apologizing, but how real is this apology? So Sherlock Homeboy is on the case. I decided that I was going to analyze all the traffic that CNET had generated to AI-generated pieces. So I exported that all out. I go into my spreadsheet, I'm digging it around, and then I started to do a, an analysis of the cost per click associated with the various keywords that they were generating traffic to, how many links they were getting, all of these things, to figure out that they were generating 5.1 million annual visits to AI-related content. So then I multiplied it by CPC on the average keyword, $1.3 million worth of monthly traffic, right? It was wild, right? This is what they were able to achieve on the back of AI-driven content that a lot of gurus will say you can't use AI to create it. But here's the truth, folks. I'm not going to BS you. I'm going to give it to you straight. Artificial intelligence is doing to white-collar jobs what robotics has long done to blue-collar jobs. It is fundamentally changing the way that we work. It's fundamentally changing the way that we are seen as professionals and executives. And I'm not going to lie to you. If you're in communications, if you're in marketing, if you're in storytelling, it is chaotic out there, right? We've got social media sites that are changing their algorithm every other day. We've got LinkedIn that's sometimes having throttling problems where the algorithm is skewing more closely towards video. We have Twitter, now X, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Like, it is chaos. And then it continues with Google. When you go on Google, you used to be able to use Google as a clear source to get to where you want to be. But today, if you type in certain keywords, Google is becoming a destination, giving people the answers right there on Google without giving you traffic, right? Then you have entire teams being replaced by this thing called ChatGPT. Yet, the budgets and the investment into marketing and the communication amongst all of this is continuing to be sl slashed lower and lower, right? Everybody wants Barbie results with Ken budgets, and it doesn't work. It's crazy, right? And then, to make it best, you're looking for a job in the wonderful world of communication, and they expect you to have content strategy, design, PR, Twitter, Jasper, all of these skills to do all of these things, and six years' experience. Y'all realize six years ago, these, some of this stuff didn't exist? Like, what are you talking about, right? So, a question. With all of this, with all of the changes, with all of the shifts, I'd be curious, how many of you think that it is possible? I'm not going to even throw with the exception. Think it is possible that someday AI could front to back do your job. Now we're going to have some fun. All right. How many of you think that you can do a Sudoku faster than AI? I dare you. <laughs> you know what's coming up. So let's see if my video works. If it doesn't work, then it's a problem with technology. And this is why AI might not work. Come on. It didn't work. All right. Different, different thing. How many of you could figure out, we're going to do an experiment. Y'all get a little bit of a notepad or something with you. I'm giving you a spoiler right now into what, how this is going to work. I'm going to show you on the slide food and an animal. And right now, you're probably doing the math to figure out how many muffins are there versus chihuahuas. Cool. Some of you got it. All right? I'm going to show you a few more. Let's see if you can do it faster than an AI would, OK? How many bagels versus dogs? AI would have got it. How many pieces of fried chicken versus puppies? AI would have got it. How many sloths versus puppies? AI just got it. There was eight muffins, six bagels, six pieces of chicken, and eight pastries. Unfortunately, we were after lunch, so you might not have gotten hungry either, but AI never gets hungry, right? This is what you're up against. You are up against that. The industry is in absolute turmoil because of all of this change, because this change is coming so quickly. And my hope is to help you navigate the chaos, right? My hope is to help you navigate the fact that it is not as easy as it used to be. It's not. My apologies. It's the reality of the world that we live in today, right? So here's what I want you to do. I want to share with you a framework. A framework that I've used to work with some of the biggest brands in the world, like Canva, Eventbrite, even Dropbox, like some of these brands to create content engines that drive ridiculous returns. And I believe truly that in nonprofits, the work that you folks do is so meaningful that I hope you can steal this slide, this idea, this framework, print it off, put it on your desk, and do this every single day. And then sprinkle a whole bunch of AI all over it. Research, creation, distribution, and optimization. A lot of us have forgotten the fact that when we think about content marketing, it's two words, right? It's not just content. 
A lot of organizations get all excited about, oh, we wrote emails, we created blog posts, we created a white paper, we created this resource, this PDF, this case study, this story of somebody who we helped, all of these things, but then they don't market the things that they create. So my hope today is to show you how to do that, but also to show you all of the things that go into a strong content engine. It starts with research. Research is when you are taking the time to understand your audience, the people who you're trying to connect to. Right? You take the time to understand the things that they type into Google. You're trying to understand the th reasons why they share online, the reason why they might say to a friend or a colleague or a peer, why don't you check these folks out? Right? Why don't we do something for this cause? Right? You need to do the research. And then once you've done the research, you move into creation where you're telling stories, then you distribute those stories where those people are spending time, and then you optimize it to ensure that it doesn't collect dust. AI has fundamentally changed the way that we use research. You can take a report today to ChatGPT. Now they just rolled out 01, which is the latest version. And you can upload a PDF, and within a matter of seconds, it will analyze it. So you can upload an investor report. You can upload a list of prospects and only have their first name, last name, and emails. You can upload that and tell them to add to that spreadsheet. Um, some of their emails to go find them to get their LinkedIn accounts. You can ask ChatGPT and AI to do all of this stuff now, right? And you can use plugins like Scraper, which will scrape actual URLs, and then create for you reports. One of the things that I always recommend is that you use ChatGPT kind of like an assistant or an intern or an even more sophisticated person who's able to do things that you're not familiar with. So I ask ChatGPT to pretend that it's an analyst at McKinsey, at Deloitte, at all these fancy companies, and tell them to analyze something and give me back a report, right? Let's say that you're in the marketing world and you're like just inherited this world of SEO and social or PPC campaigns and conversion rate optimization, but you're getting reports from your team. These reports, whether it's from a tool like Moz or Stat or whatever it might be, you can take these tools, upload them directly to ChatGPT and have it pretend that it's a marketing assistant for you and to give you recommendations based off of it. We did this for one of our own websites. And it was able to identify that some of our meta descriptions and our titles weren't actually optimized for search, and that happened in seconds, right? Challenge your beliefs and embrace experiments, folks. And now when it comes to creation, a lot of people would say, Ross, <laughs> Google hates AI content. Like, it's not going to work. I hear you. But let's go down to the Sherlock Homeboy level and say, all right, what does Google actually say? Well, Google doesn't say that you can't use AI. It just says that if it is used, maybe you should ask yourself these questions. It says, are you providing a background? Are you explaining it? It's not saying you have to do these things. It's just saying that you should ask these questions. When it talks about the content quality, it's asking, are you providing original information? Is it um, analysis? Are you providing substantial, complete, comprehensive descriptions? Again, it's not saying don't use AI. I found another site. It's called Bankrate. Bankrate also in a financial industry. And I found that they were also, just like CNET, using AI to create a ton of content. I looked at it, and it turns out that a lot of their pieces, a lot of the content that they're producing is, again, generating millions of visits completely written with AI. Here's a tip. If you are ever looking to try to achieve a certain level of success, my favorite thing to do is to become Sherlock Homeboy, but you might not want to call yourself that. So let's just call it reverse engineering. That is the process. If you want to do something, reverse engineer how other success has worked. So I took the time to analyze what was different about the AI-generated content that Bankrate and CNET was doing versus the AI-generated content that some brands were creating but actually got wiped off of Google and were told, y'all aren't allowed here. Bye, Felicia. Get out of here. Right? How did that work? OK. So I dive in, and I started to reverse engineer and analyze over 100 different pieces. And I found that there are six key things that go into an AI-optimized piece if you actually want it to work. One, you have to have high editorial standards. You cannot just use ChatGPT, copy and paste the content, and call it quits. It has to have one step in between, which is a human editor to review that piece and make sure that it speaks in your voice and in your tone. Two, it reads like a human blog post. You've all seen in a lot of AI content, probably, in the ever-evolving world of nonprofits. If it says that, it's AI. Get rid of it. You need to be the human to fix that. And if you have a LinkedIn update over the last few days that say that, everybody knows you use ChatGPT to write that. Um, multimedia content always helps increase your ability to rank. Internal linking, so when you have this content, make sure that you're linking to other pages on your site.
There's this concept called double eat, experience, expertise, authority, and trustworthiness. That means that you need to demonstrate that by sourcing quotes, by sourcing ideas from other people who are authoritative, maybe interviewing people within your org, your team, people that you support, all of those things. And then the final one, elements of disclosure. CNET, bank rate, all uh, disclose that they did it. But amidst all of this, with all the AI, here's the key, folks. Can it help you do things faster? 100%. Can it help you create content more efficiently and effectively? 100%. But you can't turn, I always say, if you're a bad writer using AI, it just lets you make bad content faster. But if you're a good writer using AI, you can create great content, I believe. But you have to understand the basics, and that is this. On the internet, there are only four types of content that actually matter. In educational content, engaging content, entertaining, and empowering content. If you create content that falls into these four categories, the internet and culture will love you. What does it mean? You need to create content that provides people with insights and information that they never had before. You have to provide them with valuable insights that help them get further in their own personal ambitions, the Maslow hierarchy of needs applied to the digital content world. You need to create content that's engaging, right? This is the content that gets people talking, stirs up a dialogue. Um, it's through personal stories by asking questions, thought starters, opinion pieces. What is your point of view on something, on a problem, on a challenge, on an obstacle that the world is going through, that your audience is going through, that a subsect of culture is going through? What is your opinion, right? Entertaining content. Everybody loves to laugh. If you can create a personal story that makes people smile, it's a faster way to their wallet. And then finally, empowering. The empowering content where you celebrate and showcase others tends to get a lot of traction online. These four types of content should be at the crux of your social strategy or at your content strategy in general. And if you sprinkle AI on it, this is the screen that essentially breaks down all of the things that you have to do to optimize an AI-generated piece. So we wrote this piece called The Ultimate Guide to SaaS Pricing, and we use this formula, and within the matter of minutes, because we elevated the content that ChatGPT created, it essentially took us probably two hours to create this piece, like 5,000 words, filled with graphics, filled with visuals, and it took off. But we had a checklist that then led to brands reaching out for us to allow for them to syndicate that content on other sites. This is Indie Hackers, which is owned by Stripe, and they were able to repurpose our content. The response was ridiculous. Tons of people saying, wow, this is so amazing. This is great. Thank you so much. We were able to get deals on the back of this. And it was all because we elevated the content with AI. So we create the draft using AI, and then we go through this checklist, which essentially is built around how to take a ChatGPT generated piece and turn it into something special, right? There's a stat that I found after doing some more research around SaaS companies. Again, I know you're not in SaaS, but the pieces, the websites that generate the most traffic are the websites that blog. It's a simple statement, simple fact. If you have a lot of pages on your website, if you have a lot of content on your website, it means that there's more entry points for people to learn about you. And for some of them, they're creating hundreds of posts every single year. How in the world can you do that with a small budget? Well, let me talk you through about how the AI can support it. So let's say you go to a keyword research tool. You can go to a keywords research tool. Let's say I run a sneaker website and I say, hey, I want to create a bunch of content on sneakers. I need some keywords around sneakers and it's going to give me the spreadsheet. I then take that spreadsheet and I can upload it to ChatGPT and I can say, identify 30 topics that I should create. I'm then going to say, yes, thank you so much. That's perfect because I don't want AI to come and get me in my sleep in a few years. So I ask it to make me a spreadsheet. It gives me back that spreadsheet. I then am able to take that same spreadsheet and upload it over to this website called copy.ai. Copy.ai looks at all of the things in my spreadsheet, and it's going to essentially analyze the keywords, create subtopics for it, identify live data sources on the internet for me that support the story that I'm creating. It will create a bunch of story ideas, compile an outline, and then write the blog post on my behalf. I start to create prompts within copy.ai where I say this is the topic which is coming from my spreadsheet. I ask it to write newsworthy content ideas, tell it to pretend that it is a data journalist for the company Wait But Why. That allows it to create stories in the way that I would like. I tell it to ensure that the outline is written in a certain format. And within five minutes, I have a ton of content assets at my fingertips that I can now use to press publish on and create blog content. Right? I now have a starting point that I can create. 
I took that exact piece, I uploaded it to a Google Doc, and I showed the timestamps because I wanted to make sure you folks seen my receipts, and I elevated that content, right? It would take about two to three hours to start to throw in the visuals. I can go into a site like midjourney.com, copy and paste actual copy from this, and get the images that I wanted in the matter of minutes. Challenge your beliefs and embrace experimentation. Folks, does anyone remember when Burger King came up with this gross looking ad? No, maybe they just ran it in Canada, I don't know. But either way, they were trying to say that their burgers get moldy and McDonald's don't, and everybody was like, oh, that's nasty, like, this is gross. So it was this brilliant campaign, but this wasn't the campaign. I did that with Mid Journey. So I was able to create that entire visual with Mid Journey, even though they would have hired a photographer to create that content years ago. Midjourney is an AI tool that allows you to create imagery of anything that you can imagine, right? And there are a ton of use cases where this is happening, where you can go to Midjourney and you can say, here's a photo of me. Remember that photo of the Sherlock homeboy? That wasn't me, that was AI. But a lot of people on social thought it was me and they're like, Ross, where'd you get that jacket? I was like, it is a good jacket. I don't have that peacoat though. Um, but like, you can create content now at scale using Midjourney and AI to bring your imagination, your creative to life. And there are actual Kickstarter campaigns around movies and films that have gone live on the back of purely AI-generated content. People are getting entire films created using AI to create them. There's actual comic books that have been published and are generating hundreds of sales every single day that were, again, created using Midjourney, ChatGPT, and these tools. So when you say, I don't think AI can facilitate the creation process, I challenge you to embrace experimentation. Then you have to think about how to get it out there. So you're creating these content assets. They're educational, engaging, entertaining, and empowering. How do you get them out there? Well, you can now use tools like summarize.tech. Let's say you're doing a podcast. You can upload that podcast to this tool. It will listen to the podcast, write the transcripts on your behalf, and write the tweets in a matter of seconds. If you're on X, this is a ridiculous cheat code. If you have video content in your library from years of content, why aren't you taking those old pieces and turning them into something new? Turning them into social clips for shorts, for social posts, et cetera. Don't let your old content die. Find ways to create something meaningful once, but distribute it forever. There's a tool called Runway ML where you're able to upload an image of anything that has happened, and you can essentially get it to turn that into a video clip. Um, that photo of me in the, uh, the Car with the dome light, that again isn't me, it was AI generated, um, things like that. There's also this cool tool called distribution.ai that allows you to do something very similar where you can upload a blog post and within the matter of seconds get 100 tweets, tons of LinkedIn posts, Facebook posts, et cetera, all in the matter of seconds. Now let me share with you another tool. It's called Eleven Labs. This is probably my favorite AI tool on the market today. The reason why I love it is because you're able to create a synthetic version of a voice. You've all thought that this is actually Ross on stage, but it's actually his AI. Kidding, it's me. <laughs> Some of you are awake. I was just checking. All right, so what I did recently, I have this podcast called Create Like... Some of y'all were like, what? <laughs> this is, uh, it was real bad. Um, so I have this podcast called Create Like the Greats. I took all of my episodes and I uploaded it to Eleven Labs. And I decided that I was going to use this cool tool called DID to create a deep fake version of myself. So I uploaded video footage of myself as well as this audio versions of myself. And within the matter of seconds, it created a deep fake version of me. I shared this on social. People were blown away because it sounded exactly like me, except it didn't get my boots right. Um, but you know, Canadian accent, it, it's a thing. But when I think about the future, I would, I want to say this here so you all can write me in a few years when it happens, but I believe there's going to be a future when you jump on Zoom, you think you're talking to somebody, but it's actually an AI, and it's not actually them, and it's trained on their actual knowledge and knowledge base of content that they've created over the years. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that that's going to happen. Some of y'all are freaking out. I agree. It's crazy, but that's the world we live in. Challenge your beliefs and embrace experimentation. Um, when I think of distribution, one of the other areas that stands out as like being a massive opportunity 
is to be able to take ideas at scale and really turn them into something special through AI. So if you're on social media, you might need graphics, for example. In my world, marketing, I'm often talking to marketers. So I took some of the best social posts that I've ever created about marketing, I uploaded them to ChatGPT, and I said, come up with 75 other quotes. ChatGPT then writes 75 other quotes in my tone, in my voice. I again ask very nicely for it to create a spreadsheet for me. It gives me that spreadsheet, and I put foundation, my company's name's handle, on the left-hand side. I then say, I'm going to upload this spreadsheet to Canva. Canva, I want to turn this into a graphic. On Canva, you're able to set up an automation where it takes documentation and elements from a spreadsheet and then imports it into these graphics. I saw this photo, I was like, that's kind of whack, I don't want to share that. Let's find something that's more Mad Men-esque. Oh, that's cool, but let's throw some melanin in so I could make it look like me. I found this one, pictures that look like me, my sis, cool. All right, hey, ChatGPT, let's use these images. I upload a bunch of them, and then within the matter of seconds, I got tons of graphics created with all of these quotes in the matter of seconds, right? And you might think, okay, but that's not really that quality. Well, there's this YouTube channel called Daily Facts Worth where they've been able to generate 2,300,000 subscribers just by doing that same cheat code. There's a YouTube channel called Cons Den, and I'm a history buff, and it is great content, who actually has leveraged AI to create historical stories about things that have happened in humanity and history, and it's all generated with AI, where they're able to give visuals and faces to people who existed in the past that we don't have graphics of, and they get millions and millions of subscribers at this point to this channel. Challenge your beliefs and embrace experimentation, folks. The last thing is optimization. This is the cheat sheet to optimization. You do need to go through AI-generated content and optimize it by hand. That is key. But there is a world where you can say, hey, ChatGPT, read this piece and make an SEO recommendation on how I can improve my on-site SEO. There's a tool called Link Reader that will scan your links and it will make recommendations to you within the matter of seconds, telling you that your titles might need to be fixed, et cetera. You can tell it to also create actual visuals on your behalf. You can say, hey, I want you to create a graphic for this blog post, and it will do that for you. Folks, we are now becoming artificial intelligence marketers. If you can embrace this framework of research, creation, distribution, and optimization, and sprinkle AI all over it, you will win. I believe truly that all of us need to start thinking differently about the way that we run our marketing engines, the stories that we tell, and the way that we create content. You need to challenge yourself to imagine a new way of creating. Maybe you're going to do things a little bit more faster because now, thanks to AI, you can do research quicker, you can create content faster, you can develop workflows and ideas faster, you can use tools like Jasper. I recently wrote a blog post, it's at rawsimmons.com, on my 30 favorite AI tools going into 2025. You can use that checklist that I shared and steal it, make it your own. You can use tools like Midjourney for graphics, DID and 11 Labs for videos, and you might already be thinking, bro, what are you talking about? This is too much. I hear you, I feel you, I'm sorry. So I encourage you to check out this Whiteboard Friday that I did where I talk about how AI can be introduced to your teams, to your culture, and it be leveraged as a part of your workflows that doesn't make everybody afraid. Now, Folks in the back, I really hope that this works because if it doesn't, then my entire presentation is gonna be ruined and I know that's hard to hear. But let me leave you all with this. Let's see. Folks in the back, y'all better make this work. <laughs> y'all killed me. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, do the click. Here we go. We gotta find a way. People are leaving. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. All right. What are you thinking? People in the back, give me the voice of God and just tell me if it's going to work or not. If it's not going to work, it's OK. It's not going to work? All right. Folks, I appreciate all of you. Um, let me leave you with this. Now nothing's working, but thank you all so much. You've been great. I appreciate you.